So we have a rare opportunity now to uh, uh, have a few minutes with uh, um, the president of a startup that has 180,000 employees, uh, which is called uh, Orange, and uh, a huge player, of course, in the internet. Didier Lombard, CEO of Orange. Thank you very much for taking the time, Didier. Welcome. We'll, um, please have a seat. Merci. Thank you. My pleasure, Didier. So I had only one request. We're so happy you're, you're here with us. I had only one request. Is just, you know, I wanted to make sure you would have the same socks as when I saw you last time. <laughs> <laughs> as a, usual. <laughs> a very famous caller, as you can see. So Didier, thank you uh, for joining us. Welcome to, uh, to the web. And uh, we are going to, um, to open two questions, so please think about questions for Didier Lombard, the CEO of Orange, and we will, uh, we will start ourselves with, uh, with, uh, with a few questions. Okay. So I was thinking we could, uh, we could, we could start talking about how you feel yourself about the, um, about the, current, you know, the current market conditions. How are you impacted? How do you think the, uh, how, how bad do you think recession is? How do you think is it, it's, it's something short term, we're overreacting to the markets? Or do you think we're going through a long crisis we should all adapt to? Um, to be um, transparent, in fact, as you know, the telecom sector is always more resilient than all the other sectors of the economy when uh, a crisis like the one we are supposed to be now uh, is happening. Yeah, if you look at all the statistics of the previous crisis, uh, fortunately the service sector, and especially the telecom sector, is more resilient than all the others, first. The second thing is, France Telecom, uh, during the last years, the last three years, has been a little bit modified, as you know, with a lot of equilibrium between what happened in France, what happened abroad, what we do with the network, what we do with the service, uh, what we do with uh, fast-growing markets, what we do with incumbent uh, part of our activity, which means that uh, we are well balanced in front of the crisis. So if something happens somewhere, we can compensate by activities in other geographies or in other activities. So the result of that is, for the time being, we have no impact from the crisis on our activities. But nobody can say today that he will never be impacted. So what we are ready to do is to adapt uh, full-time, real-time, to what will happen. In fact, you, you, we are in front of a... You have twofold in this crisis. You have the real financial crisis with the real estate problem, which are on the other continent and perhaps in Spain. And so the financial crisis, let's say, on one side, and a kind of confidence crisis which came in because the people don't trust all the others, each other. If we succeed during the following months, if the government succeed in reintroducing confidence in all this network of business, I think we can escape a dramatic event. And I hope this will be done. All the steps which has been covered by the government, the G20 and everything like that, are, of course, focused in this direction. And of course, we are pushing very hard to, to, in all the geographies to help uh, to say to the people, nothing has changed in your day-to-day -day life. In the normal geography, you don't have uh, today real impact. But the people believe that they are in danger, so you have to reintroduce confidence in the economy of the different countries. If something more difficult happens, then of course we will have to adapt, but uh, let us envisage the other assumption. Where, is, um, where, where are you taking Orange? I mean, this is a huge company, and, and you have a lot of different options ahead of you. And so, so we see Orange, of course, being in its tradition um, positioning of 
well, basically providing you know, bandwidth, mobile services, but you also do content. And recently, you've been, you've been through the Orange portals and through the brands adding more and more content. You have a lot of different activities. Where, where is your focus? Where, do you, where, do you, where are you going? Orange, France Telecom and Orange, um, originally, we are a network company. We are a telco. And you have always to keep in mind, we have always to keep in mind that basically we are, we are a telco, it's our basic competence, we remain a telco. And on this field, there is a lot of things to do because as you know, we are in, in front of a world where all the networks are evolving very, very quickly. The bandwidth of the network is changing very quickly. We are installing uh, wideband mobile everywhere, and we are on the, on the way to install uh, wideband fiber optics everywhere also. So it's our basic responsibility, and of course, we have to fulfill this responsibility. If you leave your native uh, job, it's very bad. So we are on this major activity, we are very focused and we continue to invest to deploy wide bandwidth network. If you don't have networks, forget about everything, including your marvelous symposium. <laughs> so right. you need to have networks, that's the key first. The second, the second thing is that as I have tried to explain uh, in many paper, intervention, books and so on, Internet has brought a lot of activity on top of that. You have the service, you have the content, and we have now a kind of integrated economy where all these business interact together. Therefore, if you are only a network provider, you don't get all the value from the networks that you need to get. And so, Orange, at the same time, is developing services, providing contents to our customer, uh, we are a player in the field of internet, and we will continue this field. Which means, when I want to summarize that, I say, we walk on two legs. One leg is a little bit longer and bigger than the other. It's the network. And the second, the second leg deals with internet, uh, content, uh, services, and all these activities. But we need both. To, be, to, to get all the value from our activity. If we are only on one field, which is the case for some of our competitors, it means that we lose a lot of possible value which we can get from our basic job. So if you allow me, Didier, there is a connection here because you're talking about content. And um, Paolo Coelho was just here and uh, explaining everyone that as an offer, he likes to share with everyone and that the more he puts his book and his work to, to be downloaded off the internet, the more books he sells. And so that all offers should share more, and, um, and that's the main you know, goal of an offer. So I'm sure you have a, Is it your, the way you see the, the content? It's a curious statement, you know, because uh, when you are author of books, and if you look at the return on the many hours you need to write uh, any books, <laughs> you, you find that the return on investment is very small. So I cannot believe that uh, he's serious when uh, he believes that the uh, revenues coming from the books can finance everything. It's obviously not true. You have to be back, to go back to the principles of thermodynamics. If you spend something somewhere, you have to find the revenues somewhere to finance it. It cannot be, it can be different from the tr very traditional model where you have the spend and in front of that you have the customer, he pays and it, it's a very old fashioned transaction. So it can be very uh, more adapted to the previous, to the uh, present situation of the web where you have a lot of flux of revenues which comes from a different source, but at the end of the game, you have to pay the, the guys who make the value. The authors on one side, 
the networks, thank you for me, and all the people who are involved. The, diff the, the models are quite different from the traditional model which we have with billing directly the peoples, but we need to have some money somewhere to feed all these people. So uh, I think it's unrealistic to, to believe that uh, you will share everything and you will come, to, to come back to the period of the paradise where everything was free. You don't, don't forget that the snake has come in the game and it has destroyed the freedom model. But that's what you're doing, right? You're sharing your tubes, the bandwidth, uh, the network that you're building with a lot of companies that are making a lot of money out of it. Yes, but there is somewhere uh, when you, we share the, all that, you know, there are public, we have uh, advertisement, we have content activities, we have uh, revenues which doesn't come directly from uh, with the same simple model we had before, but there are some revenues somewhere. How about the US versus Europe uh, uh, question, where we know that, um, I mean, to put it bluntly, correct me if I'm wrong, but the internet is really US dominated in terms of players. Like if you think obviously about oh, well, our other partners, thank you Orange for being a partner, but like Facebook, you know, Google, MySpace, all the social software and the search is really US dominated. As a uh, major industrial uh, figure and company in France and in Europe, how do you think we can, uh, we can fix it? Um, first of all, you, you, you have to remind a little bit from the recent history of uh, all the technology of uh, information technology. The story has been a replication of the same model several times. Uh, in the very old days, a lot of you was, were not born at that time, IBM has dominated the hardware. And uh, he has become, a, let's say, a kind of monopoly, very strong monopoly. But on the other side, he, he has brought a lot of technology uh, available for everybody. Then the monopoly has been broken. Uh, he moved to other activity and the story follow, uh, continues. The second step has been software, where Microsoft has brought a, a very sophisticated software activities, which allow uh, everybody to enter the game, which was not possible earlier, because if you remember the system uh, we had before, it was a nightmare to, uh, to program the machine. So. Microsoft has brought something which is very important for the progress of humanity in this field. He becomes a monopoly, and then it has been destroyed. <laughs> it is no more a monopoly. There are the free uh, software system and so on. Okay. Now we come to the search activity. When internet uh, deployed, you had thousands, millions, billions of servers everywhere around the world, and it was impossible to find its way normally on the web. I remember a period of time which is not so long away. Uh, all the players pass some list of address where you can find the marvelous server will give you the movies or whatever. Then Google comes, he has a monopoly. He has the same behavior as all the others before that. He creates foundation, he wants to be very kind with everybody. Nevertheless, he is very strong and he is on one side of the Atlantic. It will not be the end of the world, uh, it's not the end of life. We will have a uh, new period after that. So you're saying First like of all, the monopoly will be destroyed. But wait, can you explain? <laughs> because that's interesting. You, 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 will you, have, you will have some other uh, people who will provide services uh, with search engine more sophisticated and in fact what will happen is I think you in think the field of video there is a large field open to find the appropriate video on the, on, the, on the net. Even now if you look for a video on the net you are in front of billions of videos which you cannot find. So you think the next thing is video search? Probably the next step will be video search. You will have a big company who will but they have, they have YouTube, takes, uh, right? Domination. So they have YouTube. Perhaps so. it will be Google, but it can be some, uh, somebody else. And is this an official announcement that Orange is getting into a video search? We, we work on that, but ah. uh, don't, don't sell <laughs> the product before we have it. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So, I think it's an important step. So, we are with all these layers progressively, and what we have to do in Europe is to take all the decisions to be in a position to provide these new services on top of the others to facilitate the life of the Internet people. Are you working with your friends like Dutch Telecom and British Telecom? We, we are discussing with them, which is a, a, an important step. <laughs> so before I take one question, if you can prepare it uh, and have a mic ready, this is very interesting. So Orange is moving into video search and uh, to, to try to compete with and what, is, what is important, I don't know if it is video search, which will be the next step, but what is important is that our people, our young people, works on open uh, APIs to deploy the new things which can be dominated on the net for the future. Okay. So we'll try to do all we can do to facilitate that. So you're, you have a room here full of startups and entrepreneurs. Yes. And uh, how, how can they be acquired by Orange? You know, I am quite <laughs> interested. You know why? Because they are more intelligent than we are. That's so for sure. If they work for us, we will be more powerful. <laughs> I see. But so, how, so you acquire companies, right? What is like as an entrepreneur? I'm sure a few people here would uh, would would love to to join, you know, to be acquired by Orange. How do you? What are your criteria? Are you interested in startups? What are you looking for? Is is the way is working with your APIs and integrating with Orange the first step that you're uh, you're interested in? You know, I I have referred uh, recently to what I say the bazaar mode in terms of R&D, which means that if you believe that. Um, uh, you will invent everything yourself forever. In the world where we are living now, you are dead because you are too slow. You don't know everything. So you have to take advantage that there are thousands of people who can provide some step uh, to facilitate the deployment of new things. And if you help them at the end of the game, you help yourself at the same time. And uh, you have to work uh, as a kind of network. You will be more powerful, and it will uh, avoid you to arrive late at the final step. I think one of the reasons of the fact that Europe is not really ahead is because we are late in, and we, speak, we, we think with always our marvelous organization. We try to build a cathedral each time, and it's not the way we can succeed on the net. Are you, are you going to invest, like one of the things we all struggle from is difficult in Europe, more difficult to find business angels, to find, you know, the seed investment and even the venture capitalist sometimes is not as fast as in other places. Are you doing anything with this in terms of helping we, startups? We, we have some uh, subsidiary of uh, France Telecom who do this kind of business, but more important, we have created something which I have called the Orange Village. Uh, which is a part of France Telecom, which is not really in the organization. Orange Village, Orange on village. the side. They don't have to follow the rules of the group, okay. which gives them a lot of freedom. What do they do? And their target is only to invent innovation, which are rupture innovation. And invest? Uh, the ideas are interesting for me if they are not in continuity with the present situation. Who do we call? Who do we and uh, the next step will be to open that to external. Okay, so I guess members. we go to the Orange booth and uh, we can contact with them. So okay. we have one question here. Can you uh, stand up and introduce yourself, please? Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Tom Morris. I'm here as a blogger, but I'm asking as an Orange customer. Um, I'm an Orange customer in the UK, and uh, I'm just talking, wondering about data prices. Um, in the UK, the data which I have used in the last few days would have cost me three or four pounds as an Orange customer. Here, roaming, it would have cost me six to seven hundred pounds. Um, we're part of a common market. Can't we sort this out? Um, you know, this is 2008. Why, why is it costing so much for data, uh, for roaming? <laughs> you have to ask the UK regulator which will give you the answer. I don't want to enter in details on that because uh, it depends on the local situation. And uh, the regulation of the, in the UK is one of the, let's say, less efficient we know uh, because uh, for a lot of reasons. 
and uh, the, the situation you described depends on that. No, no, please keep going, Lydia. <laughs> I am not here to give you <laughs> to open a discussion with so the UK regulator. So it's not only Orange that can solve it's this. It's not only Orange; it's uh, all the UK market, which is on this case. Okay. So and so, how can we how can we work best with Orange? Like just you know, like I, as a startup myself, I'm very interested. You know, how how do we get into your uh, millions of people portals on the phone and and on the Orange.fr? How do we get promoted as a startup? What's the best way to do this? The the best way, of course, is. Uh, to get in touch with the people in the Orange uh, labs and the techno centers. Uh, tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow, I will be in London to, to open a new techno center in, uh, in, in Bristol and London. And uh, in fact, uh, there are the, the future contact points of the community because they, the, the, one of their tasks is obviously to, to, uh, to enter in a dialogue with the local people. Is there any way we can help? You know, this room, help you, you know, get more connected to, you know, and, and this ecosystem? Well, as far as this, this group uh, gets the information that we are open, it's a major step. <laughs> All right. Well, Didier, thank you very much for supporting uh, us doing this event here. That's already a very, very, uh, very, very good uh, thank you. thing you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll let you go back to your, uh, to your startup. Thank you, Didier. Thank you. Bravo, merci. Merci beaucoup.